Hello and welcome to It's No Secret. I'm Christine. And I'm Kat. And today on the podcast, we're talking about common money mistakes to avoid when traveling. With both Kat and I heading away on holidays in the next couple of months, we figured what better time to dig into avoiding spending all your money (laughs) by accident on travel. Um, well, on things that like you shouldn't. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So more about the mistakes rather yes. than the actual like fun of traveling. Exactly. Yeah, because so you are planning on well, you're actually two days away from going yeah. away. Yep. So that's exactly. Fun. Yep. So I'm in the thick of like actually doing all the organization of my money life right now. So we can talk about that because there's a few things that yeah, I'm like quick last minute scramble, gotta hustle, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> transfer wise. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have recently been away for a week, but also going away at the end of the year to see my fam in Denmark, which is exciting. Also very underprepared. So this is great. Yeah. I'm gonna learn as we go. <laughs> Cool. Um, so I guess to set the scene a little bit, I found some great stats around us Kiwis wanting to travel. Um, mm-hmm. 85% of Kiwis plan to travel in the next year, according to Intrepid Travel, which is a lot. And yeah. not really surprised given we haven't really been anywhere in the last sort of three For sure. Ish years. Yep. Um, yeah. And 72% said the pandemic slash cost of living wouldn't stop them from taking the trip. So, which is very high. Yeah. Because also travel right now is really expensive. So I feel like yeah. anywhere that you can cut costs or just save money in general is definitely needed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And travel is most certainly a luxury, not a necessity. Yes. So. But clearly yes. Kiwis are ranking them high on the list, yeah. which is exciting. Yeah. Um, also, I see here you've got that places Kiwis most wanted to travel were around New Zealand to Australia or Turkey. Yeah. Turkey's random is number yeah. three. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's hot, maybe. That's what it is. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I also was quite surprised why, you know, do Kiwis want to go around New Zealand at the moment? Is it because it's like oh. we're going into summer and camping? I guess so. Maybe? And maybe just more family friendly you know what yeah. you know it's a lot easier yeah. maybe you can drive although then again that's expensive because fuel's expensive there's, there's <laughs> yeah. no cheap options really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> having a cheap holiday at the moment is just not happening so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. definitely so oh. yeah fun little set the scene yes Should love we... that so i guess the number one thing that we've already talked about yes. obviously is when you go on holidays you have to spend money and making sure that you do that in an effective way that's not going to cost you a lot is super super important yeah. i feel like every young person that listens to the show will be on board with this but I'm just going to tell a quick story about the fact that like my parents live in Australia they come to New Zealand a lot to visit us and my dad for the absolute life of him refuses to open a transfer wise account oh, yeah. because he's like they've got no banks and I'm like they've got more customers around the world than fucking <laughs> like ASB have what's wrong with you you know and it just drives me wild but he, <laughs> so he is over 70 and you know I do have to like respect that but still like so I guess before I just bang on too much about that rant um obviously guys it is so crucial to not just go overseas and use your normal bank card like you would because Mm -hmm. that is the easiest way to start racking up unnecessary costs at every possible point right yeah i have definitely done this in the past (laughs) yeah it's not pretty when you get back and you're like for sure and it's one of those things like you need to be organized because whether you're using transfer wise or another service Mm -hmm. you have to obviously have enough time before you go you can't just do it the day before you go because you need to open the account and actually get the card and like transfer the money and figure out your things so (laughs) hot tip we did this um a few weeks back because i've had a wise account and a bank card attached to it for quite a while but luke doesn't and then it made me feel really nervous that we were going overseas with just one card and Mm -hmm. so i forced him to open an account and get a card just in case so you know Again, make sure you've got more than one if there's two of you traveling. Um, The other thing is, you know, making sure then you have backup cards should anything be stolen or be lost. So we are also taking our, uh, we've got two credit cards, one that's Australian based um, that we've had since living in Australia and then one that is a New Zealand one, but we don't really have any intention to use them. They're just like the emergency cards. Yeah, nice. Yeah, should you need something. But transfer wise or now that they're wise are our number one and, you know, just make little things like do you have all your currencies that you need to yeah. on where you're going yeah. how much money are you putting into each of them you know yeah. all that sort of stuff yeah recently as i said we went to sydney and i was the person that wasn't prepared didn't have any money basically. i know but ollie thank goodness had done all of that had money Great. and so i just like kind of took exactly. all of his um but we were because tra- doesn't it annoy you if you don't you just are not prepared because you're being a bit lazy and then yeah. you're like god damn it now i'm paying what you know whatever it is 2.95 percent per transaction 
reduction or mm-hmm. you know x amount every time this happens and yeah. no thanks i yeah i actually had some american cash funnily enough that i was like oh there's enough here to like possibly get me through Oh. But then I found, I was like, no, I just trying to pick and choose what to spend the money on, especially when you have like cash. It's like, who has cash these days? <laughs> True. <laughs> and then I ended up getting to the airport as well, actually, and being stung with high exchange fees because I didn't do it until I got there. Yeah, it was all a bit of a fiasco. Yeah. But, um, but now yeah. I feel like, you know, the nice thing with travel is using cards like Wise is so easily accepted and like universally mm. accepted, right? I yep. remember going overseas for the first time and you'd have to take out a certain amount in cash and then like yeah. split the cash between like <laughs> your person and your check luggage and other luggage and all that kind of stuff because they're like what if your card can't be accepted and that yeah. just feels so ridiculous and foreign I have mm. absolutely no intention to take any cash out when we're overseas yeah don't do it so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were also while we were in Sydney we were traveling with Ollie's um, brother and brother's girlfriend and at one point um, one of them one of their cards got blocked from their bank and that was the that only. old chestnut yep. hot tip. Tell yep. your bank you're going overseas. Yep. So again, you know, with the two cards that we have that I guess we're taking as our emergencies, you do not want to be in a situation where the emergency happens. You need the backup card. You yep. haven't told Westpac that you're going to be in Paris <laughs> and then you go to Paris and they're like, rawr, rawr. no, you cannot pay for that thing because <laughs> no backup plans, so no yeah. backup plans from there. So yeah, shout out to Westpac because we do bank with them and you can actually just like update them in the app that you're going mm-hmm. overseas. So, you know, again, just ticking off the little things off the to-do list. Yeah. I think the moral of the story is get transfer-wise and, um, like you say. Yep, exactly. And have enough money and so maybe. you don't have to use your backup plan. Yep. <laughs> but do have a backup plan of some variety for yep. cards. Exactly. Yep. Anything else on spending money? I actually, I guess taking it back a step is possibly planning the amount of money that you're going to have to spend mm, while you're so away. So hard. Yeah. So hard. Because I'm not great at this. I just kind of, like, it also buying your flights and paying for accommodation and all of those things ahead of actually traveling is quite easy because you Mm. you obviously have the ability to do that ahead of time but when you get over there knowing how much things are going to cost it's not like you're going to sit down and work out how much a croissant costs you know like paris or sydney or whatever like so yeah that is definitely a big one yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. i mean maybe i would say the answer to that because we've been going through this trying to budget for like how much is a family of three going to need every day for food and fuel Mm. in europe and i have absolutely no idea but the nice thing about um wise is that you can have multiple accounts and you can have one i think it's called like savings jar and you can basically just park money in it that's then not accessible on the card and then through the app you can transfer it between the two so you know if you're going for a longer period of time or even a shorter period of time and you're maybe just a little bit spendy spendy (laughs) on like days one and two um you know (laughs) because we are going for a longer period of time we're away for five weeks i'm not planning on having like all five weeks worth of cash sitting on the card accessible right trying to almost do what we do at home which is Mm, like you know (laughs) yeah we'll have your money in the other account and then transfer it onto the spending card yeah. like on a weekly basis to try and not go crazy because yeah, no one also likes getting to the end of their holiday and being like I have spent all of my money in the first two <laughs> weeks and now I have a week of poverty yeah. <laughs> on my the last week of my trip is just eating like baked beans no yeah. thank you yeah exactly or you don't you don't want to be that friend that has like done it well and then you're like oh well I want to go do all these things and all your other friends Correct. don't have any money so you need to take them along for the ride with you yep exactly yeah. love it so good get hustling if anyone's going away soon get organized now this is your reminder yeah number two your phone phone oh catches you out yeah i again don't even think about it when i travel well christine now we're going to talk about it <laughs> because <laughs> you need to think about it right now yeah. so this is obviously dependent based on who your network is with but I know for us, we are with Vodafone and at the moment on our plan, I think to go overseas, you're charged like $8 a day to continue your normal plan. It used to be five and guys, inflation, (laughs) getting me. Um, At $5 a day, it was kind of stomachable. Like I was like, this is palatable. I can, this is okay. Mm. But at $8 a day, if you're anywhere for over a week, it does kind of add up a bit. And then Mm. I was like, "Mm, I don't know. Um, Particularly if there's two of you, because then Luke and I both (laughs) use our phones all of a sudden at $16 a day. And I'm like, "Mm, do we really need this um yeah 
So looking at what is already, like what's the default, right? What's going to happen the minute you land in the country if you do Mm. nothing? Um, And then if that's not what you want to have happen, being organised in advance. So in the example of Vodafone, I know that you can actually buy now like overseas data use packs and stuff. So we could say Mm. we're not going to use our normal plan whilst we're away. We're just going to buy this other amount. yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking it's quite different also going between countries versus going to one for the whole time. So you're going through like a couple countries. When I went to Sydney, what we did was we just got to the airport and we bought new SIM cards for another like yeah, provider perfect. because we were like, also now we have that next time we go back yeah. and we don't really, it's a, it was it's like, easy. Tw- yeah, like $20 for, for I don't sure. know, like a My brother did that recently gigs. when he came from Australia to New Zealand, yeah. like way easier to just buy basically an easy SIM card and all he really needed was data so that he could yeah. like text us and use yeah. Google Maps. <laughs> and um, lose the keys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you're right. That is a lot harder if you're going to places where you're potentially like going through different borders and then yeah. all of a sudden you're like oh how is this all working exactly (laughs) but I think this is one of those things that you know you always hear those horror stories of of people just forget and then Mm. they get back after like a two-week vacation and have a giant thousand dollar phone bill and no thank you Oh, no, that's thank not you. something that you want yeah. to welcome you home. <laughs> no, exactly. So in our instance, we have agreed between Luke and I that only one of us is going to be using our phone nice. because in terms of <laughs> actually having like data. <laughs> Obviously, we will have two phones, but we're like, no, we're together. All our families can just like, you know, text us in our family chat and we can still reply on the one number. Yeah, um, nice. And then the other person will just be able to use all their apps that you can use on Wi-Fi anyway, which let's be honest, like we're not staying anywhere that doesn't have Wi-Fi. Yeah. So <laughs> Cat is not going off the grid. <laughs> no, exactly. So it's it's not as big a deal as we're probably making it out to be. Yeah. We'll still have one phone with data for things like maps and things that we need. But yeah, yeah, nice. Oh, true. If you're driving, maps is quite important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Having oh no, what did we do without? <laughs> yeah. How did we have a holiday? Yeah. I don't know. Or you could just not get a phone and buy a map. <laughs> yeah. I can't read French. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, again, good. something that you need to definitely prep for in advance, right? Because you yeah. don't want to be figuring that out like the day you land in the foreign country. No, it's, yeah, not, not fun. Great. No. Number three. I'm going to throw this next one to you because I want to know, do you already have travel insurance? Did you get travel insurance to go to Sydney is my first question. I'm going to tell you off if the answer is no. Yeah, okay, so you guess that number three is insurance. Yeah. <laughs> so an answer to the first part of that, did we get travel insurance? We actually did, but I it was only begrudgedly by me because Ollie kind of forced me into it. <laughs> Well done, Ollie. I yeah. hope you listen to this. Yeah, Kudos yeah. to you. Yeah, Christina's in the dog box oh, right yeah. now. With all three of these points so far. Um, but I guess the backstory behind that is Ollie was also going to Fiji for work and it's compulsory that you have to have travel insurance mm. to enter the country. And I think that's in part that's because... That's very interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Good on them. Yeah. And I think that's, it must be because They do not COVID. want us weighing on their health system. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or that you are able to get back. Yes. Get out if well, you, exactly. something happens. So, yeah. yeah, I think it was... From memory probably like four hundred dollars for a week or something like yeah. that so i mean it's not insignificant it does mm. add up and we do for plan and sure. plan on getting it when we go to for denmark sure. um for christmas as Great. well but yeah Great. What about? Um, I am a huge proponent of travel insurance. I truly do not know how people go on holidays without having travel insurance because I guess I just think about it this way, right? Like I do understand that if you're going to Australia for a week, you're like, oh, $400 seems like a lot for something that probably won't happen. That is fair. Mm. However, if something did happen, how much is that going to cost you? You're in a country that, you know, I think in New Zealand, we kind of live in this weird bubble because we have ACC that even if you don't have forms of private health insurance, you get a lot of cover. Mm. Guess what, guys? That doesn't exist in other countries. Like... (laughs) It's not like, you know, when Australians come to New Zealand or a foreigner comes to New Zealand and they injure themselves, they get covered under ACC. You go to Australia, good luck, you're on your own. Especially as a Kiwi. (laughs) Literally, you know, and so it's like I I think that sometimes that reality – is just missing for people. Um, And I am also going to tell people a horror story around this as to why you should 100% have travel insurance. So five years ago now, it was actually just as we were moving to New Zealand, my brother was traveling in North America and South America with some friends and then he was ending the trip by himself. Um, We got a phone call when he was on the South American leg of his holiday from one of his mates saying that he was in hospital. They thought he had pneumonia. Um, His friends were continuing on their trip. It was basically around the time that they were meant to kind of like go their separate ways, which was all fine. Um, But they just wanted to let us know because he didn't have like easy access to a phone being in the hospital that he was in, in part of Chile. Mm. Um, 
by pure coincidence, I had just quit my job because we were planning to move to New Zealand in the next month. And Luke also had that time off work. And we were naturally a little bit like concerned about him being in Chile in a hospital by himself. Yep. Um, and so also having the like luxury of cheap airfares, thanks mm. to Luke's job, oh, yeah. we staff travelled to Chile um, thinking that like – it would kind of be fine. It would sort of be a bit of a vacay, a bit of a funny story. We landed there and we couldn't go to the hospital straight away because of like visiting hours. So oh. Luke and I went out to dinner and got really drunk because the spirits <laughs> are really strong. I had like way too many cocktails. Woke up the next morning being like, it'll be fine. It was absolutely not fine. Mm. Like a hard out, not fine. Mm. Worst day of my life being very, very hungover and faced with the reality that what eventuated was my brother needing to have part of, well, about a quarter of his his lung cut out in open chest surgery in a foreign country where very few people spoke English um, in a private hospital that you would only literally be let into if you paid the upfront bill in advance Mm -hmm. as a foreigner. That upfront bill to literally be let in the door was $20,000. The only way that we could do that was either handing over one of our personal credit cards, which we were just lucky enough that Luke's credit card even had a $20,000 limit because yeah, mine yeah. certainly does not, um, or getting your insurance, travel insurance company to pay. Yeah. The alternate was leaving him in the public hospital that he was in, which for everyone's reference was an old tuberculosis hospital. There were nine men in this hospital ward. There were uh, glass windows and like no covers, no privacy between the beds. He was basically lying in this bed. He couldn't leave. They told him that he could have no valuables on him because they would probably be stolen. Um, So, yeah, it was a bit of a shit show. And in the end, um, what literally was him getting a viral infection from going swimming in a swimming pool that turned into pneumonia, that turned into a infection in his lung that started eating his lung that resulted in this major surgery, cost our travel insurance company over $100,000. If we didn't have travel insurance, we would have had to pay that. That's so much money. Yeah. I feel like you've literally had experience with everything. I was like, you've just been around the block a few times. (laughs) But I think think the thing in that situation, right, is people are like, oh, I'll get travel insurance because maybe I will need to see a doctor and get some, like, prescription medication because I get tonsillitis overseas, which has also happened to me. And that is sometimes how you have to use travel insurance. Mm. But I guess the point is, is you also just really don't know what situation is going to happen to you and yeah. the surgeon that did the surgery on my brother said to us like if if anyone within their own country had gone swimming in the same swimming pool and had like basically swallowed some water i think he had a bacterial infection get into him they would have been fine because they had of immunity to that yeah. you as a foreigner do not mm. and you're not used to these like different germs that we have here and you've just come out of winter and now you're in like hot weather and it yeah. just didn't work well for him and it was like a very very bad result he ended up being fine he's lived to tell the tale um <laughs> <laughs> i shouldn't joke about that it was actually quite serious yeah. but you know it's just I am now so happy to hand over my money to any travel insurance company for obviously a good policy and Mm. a reasonable amount. Mm. But it's like for those medical things, you just have absolutely no idea, A, what might happen and B, what it might cost in another country. I did not expect 20 grand to turn into 100,000. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm. It was things like, you know, because they paid for basically all of his medical bills. I think the surgery alone, like the specialist, his time in the specialist hospital, you know, he was in ICU for like three days. He was in hospital for over two weeks. Um, They Mm. paid for all of that. They paid for me to be there the whole time because he needed assistance. Um, They then ended up flying my dad over because I couldn't stay any longer. So dad had to come. They had to fly them both back. Rob had to come back in business class because he couldn't like (laughs) sit in a certain way. All those kinds of things. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And this is not the other. I've, I've got other stories of other friends that have had a similar like Really? Yeah. What else is it? A friend that fell out of a four-story window and basically broke every single bone in his body and then um, needed to have multiple surgeries in Portugal and I think was in their medical system for about six weeks and then eventually had to be like Transfer sent back. back to New Zealand because he wasn't going to receive the specialist care that he needed in that country. Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, goosebumps. I know. That sounds horrific. Yeah. And you just you just don't know. Like my mm. brother was like young. This was when he was he would have been like twenty five. 
yeah you know it can happen yeah yeah, like Mm. no other issues um so yeah travel insurance for sure Mm. i think there's probably you know you obviously need to shop around for a good policy when it comes to this now i'm just like just go with a company that is big enough and serious enough that if something happens you're going to be covered because my biggest learning actually other than just needing travel insurance was they were really difficult to deal with at some points Mm. like and that's the other thing is there was no way that um and this is what you don't think of at the time like there's no way that rob could have uh been dealing with them whilst he's literally in hospital you know like you have to have other people in your family kind of advocate for you and help you and potentially be over there Mm. and to do that um you know it was a big cost for us to be able to fly over and help him so yeah thankfully insurance covered that but yeah something to think about Mm. choose them wisely yes yes choose them wisely don't Mm. go through like a cheap dodgy one yeah (laughs) that's um actually perfectly lead on to the next one but i did want to say one thing before we move do move on yeah um insurance can also help when you lose your baggage and need yeah, to like for sure. um which know. is happening to a lot of people right now yeah very it's timely. very common and I know. um actually i was talking to ollie's mum yesterday who because on the way to denmark we're flying through hamburg and apparently yeah. oh she had a friend who recently they went to uh, france for something and yeah. all of her baggage got lost it was thousands yeah. of dollars um of her clothes and the key point around that was to make sure that you're kind of tracking everything that you or like writing Mm. down what you actually have in your bag great shout yeah so that you know like what you can claim for and how much of the value that you can actually get back the psycho that i am i'm already like writing packing lists so now i'm like i'm gonna take this packing list with me (laughs) but also to like make sure that the most valuable stuff you have in your hand like yes for sure super important as well yeah all those bags of oh. cash you carry around. You know? I must say yeah. we're already hacking this because <laughs> we are splitting all of our clothes between the two bags because I was like, I don't want one person's entire luggage oh, to yeah. be lost. Smart. And then it's like you have to yeah. you know, rebuy for like Lily. That would be really annoying. Yeah, yeah that's so true. <laughs> Whereas, you know, we could probably make do with like one pair of pants and one jumper and like a few T-shirts for a time. Yeah. Uh, but if one person is like entirely unable to be dressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> problematic <laughs> so yeah cool. that's a good point actually mm. number four though um we talk about avoiding third parties so i think this is just kind of common mm. sense right when it comes to travel like sure there is a time this. and place for some third parties maybe like travel agents depending on where you're needing to go but for the most part like you actually often get the best deals just going direct mm. right yep. or Just thinking about cutting out the amount of like middlemen in any transactional booking that you're doing. And I think that kind of applies blanketly to like lots of things. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I absolutely avoid third parties like the plague after this one experience that I had. Well, if you have a problem, like you need to get a refund or something, it's a lot harder than dealing with, you know, say it's an airline, the airline directly. Yep. So, yep. Perfect example. I... There was a point in my life where I was like having a little bit of a midlife crisis, sold all my stuff, wanted to travel to Nepal, bought a ticket, um, was on time, actually super early, got to the counter and then they told me that I had put my name on the ticket wrong. So because I have a double barreled last name, Jensen Olegas, I forgot Olegas and that needs to match my passport. passport. And so then because I booked through something like Skyscraper or Scanner or whatever it's called, Mm. I (laughs) tried to change it but they said no you had to do it 72 hours before so I lost that flight um and had to stand there and wait while the plane left off <laughs> and it was like a grand um that and I had to pay for it on the spot when these flights were like $600 or $500 ahead of that yeah just yeah. picture me crying in the airport with my sister telling yeah. me to get over it yeah um I can, I can actually <laughs> picture that yeah it wasn't pretty I've seen you cry just placing you in an airport <laughs> yeah <laughs> And also, like, at an airport, you're so, like, flustered and stressed. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, it's not fun. It's just, it's just like, forthcoming for tears. Like, yeah. there's nothing you can do. <laughs> yeah. It's the environment. Yeah. Oh, so, that's so annoying. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, also another example is recently, Caroline, my sister, was traveling through the U.S. and booked her flights. I think it was actually even through Air New Zealand, but because she was in the U.S., they didn't have an Air New Zealand desk. Uh-huh. And so couldn't she was delayed and they rebooked her and blah, blah, blah. It was this big fiasco. And so sometimes it does actually pay to like book with the airline that you're traveling mm. through in the terms of the country what you mean, rather than the code share yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's not always avoidable agree mm. agree agree do you have any fun stories around um being with that? thankfully nothing like terrible for oh we have actually now we've done a little bit with just like travel bookings mostly for accommodation when trying to book for like bigger family events and of course it's yeah, just right. really hard when you need to it's all the changing it's like cancelling or changing dates it's just yeah. a nightmare so i'm like no <laughs> direct every time yeah. So yeah, 
And then number five, researching ahead of time. So (laughs) making sure that you actually plan enough in advance to not end up in a situation where you just have to throw money at a problem. (laughs) Yeah, basically. (laughs) Yeah, so the two points were um, what we just talked about in terms of luggage. Just making sure that you know what you're entitled to. So there's a, like, specifically with luggage, pretty sure that in European law or something like that, if you don't receive your baggage within 24 to 48 hours you're entitled to x Mm. amount i think it's like a couple grand or something also fun tip on that making sure that you know if it's the airline's fault what the airline policy is for lost baggage Mm. so i know i don't know 100 percent right now with emirates but in the past when traveling with emirates um there is that that basically when you get to the airport and your bag is lost they will give you an amount in the local currency immediately um to cover a certain amount fun fact they give you more depending on what class of passenger you Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah, so we had done this because we had flown halfway in business class and halfway in economy, and we were like, can we have the business class allowance because we want more money? (laughs) Trying to be sneaky. But also we were like, are you just assuming that people in business class are dressed better? I mean, maybe a fair assumption. I don't know. No. Yeah, surely that's (laughs) ridiculous. worked into the ticket. Exactly. Um, But yeah, definitely something to think of. And this Mm. is also just reminding me some of the bonuses of travel insurance. So I know um, our travel insurance, I think we got through Southern Cross. And you can actually, in the same way as like your home contents cover here, Mm. you can specify items um, of a specific value if you want it to be covered. So we ended up getting a policy that covers us for the whole year um, because we knew that we would be going to like Australia multiple times and Mm. it just covers Lily and I if we like travel, you know, with like Luke on a work trip, that kind of stuff. Um, And so we put things on there like Luke recently travelled and took his golf clubs and his golf clubs are like, Two grand. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, well, if they get lost, we want those specifically covered. And it was yep. just, I think, you know, there's some stuff like that, or, you know, r- jewelry is another example, or mm. say, a particular camera, that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. This was also just making me think of when I went to Nepal and in the travel insurance, it explicitly said you cannot um, do like skydiving or any type of adventure sports. Yep. And it's quite common to go paragliding over there. I just went anyway. Um, but oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I came, I lived to tell the tale. 